mittens. We have our winter uh, mitten tree in the narthex for hats, mittens, gloves, scarves, and children's socks. That will be av available through January 15th. We will also be having a coat drive on January 14th and 15th. And so if you have any coats that you would like to donate, gently used or new, um, those are greatly appreciated as well. Um, our next blood drive is January 27th from 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock in the evening. Um, a reminder of our Christmas post office. Uh, you, I would recommend that you take a look out there and make sure that if you have any cards, you bring those home. Um, or, but we do continue to have that available if you want to distribute cards to other members of the community as well. Um, we are also in need of several worship assistants for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, um, as well as moving forward as well. Um, I don't think January is out there quite yet, um, but I encourage you to check the bulletin board on your way out to see if there's a way that you might be able to help out on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day this year. Uh, and then um, I had one other announcement. Oh, Christmas Eve worship services. Um, so we begin with our Christmas Eve services actually tonight with our jazz mat service at 6 o'clock. There is rehearsal beforehand from 3 to 5. Yep, it'll be a great service. Um, we give thanks to Denise and the band and all those that are participating in leading that worship service tonight. Um, so especially if you're traveling or not able to make it on Christmas Eve, uh, we encourage you to come out tonight, or if you're looking just for another opportunity to worship, it's a great opportunity to do so. Um, then we have our Christmas Eve worship services this coming Saturday. Four o'clock is the children's service, and seven and nine are our candle lighting services. Christmas Day, we have a 10 a.m. service. Um, and then for New Year's weekend, we have our five o'clock service on Saturday and one service on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Um, so we hope to see you here for worship. I believe that concludes the announcements, and so now I invite you to please stand. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to one to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance. You're coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God, who lives with us, sharing our flesh and our bones. As Mary waited and Joseph dreamed, so we wait and dream for you. Bless us and let your face shine upon us, more radiant than these candles and more dear than all else we seek. Restore us when we fail to refuse the evil and choose the good and banish all our fears. We pray in the name of Emmanuel, God with us, your promised child and our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and I invite the children forward. There's a couple of them that we have here. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming up. It's a lot easier than talking to the camera all alone. So, <laughs> All right, um, so today we hear a story about um, Joseph and an angel visiting Joseph. And that angel tells Joseph that Mary's going to have a baby and that uh, they are to name that baby Jesus. Um, and the fun thing is that every name has a meaning, right? Um, we've probably heard that before, and of course, parents have spent a long time thinking about names and, you know, what to name their kids. Um, and so, you know, before you were born or before any of those kids out there were born, um, their parents probably spent a long time trying to decide, you know, what to name their kids, and maybe they even thought about what the name Jesus meant, too. Um, so some families have stories about, you know, the process they went through in choosing a name or things like that, or... You know, suddenly the kid was born, and they were like, oh, no, that name isn't going to work. We need a different name. Um, when I was, well, before I was born, if I was going to be a boy, my parents wanted to name me Basil. <laughs> so I'm really glad. They didn't have a name for a girl, so my sister had to name me. Um, so <laughs> every, you know, a lot of families have different stories like that. Um, my daughter, Ella, her full name is Gabriella. Um, and when she was really, really young, like one or two months old, she would stay up super late at night. Um, she would stay up to like one or two in the morning, and she would be happy. She wouldn't be crying or anything. Um, but one of our professors at seminary said, of course she stayed up late at night. He named her after the, the angel that came to visit Mary and Joseph and woke them up in the middle of the night. So of course, you know, Gabriella, the angel Gabriel, um, of course she would wake people up. Um, and I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but Gabriella, my daughter, her name means angel or messenger of God. Um, do you know what your name means? No? All right, I looked it up. It means worthy of adoration and praise. Hmm. So there you go. You are worthy to be praised. All right. So, um, but there are so many different names, and you can go online and you can look up, you know, what people's names mean. There are books, that, you know, that have all the meanings of different names. Um, but Jesus' parents, they didn't get to pick his name. Um, they had the angel Gabriel or another angel came and said, you're going to name your child Jesus because Jesus will save the people from their sins. So Jesus means that the Lord saves. 
um, but um, because Jesus comes to save us, right? Um, another name that Jesus gets is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So in, um, in Jesus, we have the one who comes to save us, and we have the one who is with us, who is God with us. Um, and that's really cool that we get, you know, these wonderful names of Jesus that um, remind us of what Jesus is here to do, that Jesus is here to save us, and that Jesus is God who has come to us. Um, and so that's what we give thanks for today, and we'll pray together. Dear God, we thank you for the gift of names, for all the meaning and the time that goes into choosing names. We ask that you continue to guide us, to remind us that Jesus comes to us, that Jesus is God with us, who comes to save us. As we prepare for Christmas, help us to remember this name, to remember Jesus, who is the light of the world and who gives us love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a moment. chapter of Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Cast your sign at the door of the sky. What did you do for Sheol or high of heaven? But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you who were immortal, if you were in my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. She shall eat curds and honey by the time any powder is used to eat it and choose the good. For before the child be powder is used to eat it and choose the good, the land before whose teachings you are in dread will be deserted. Holy wisdom, holy will. Let us say Psalm 880 responsibly. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. Restore us, O God, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. have fed them with the bread of tears, and you have given them bowls of cool to drink. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. <clears throat> the second reading is from the first chapter of Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, when he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including ourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy wisdom, holy word.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared before him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Mighty God of all creation, you sent your angels to proclaim the good news of Christ's birth among your chosen people. Make us messengers of that same good news and inspire in us gratitude for those messengers who have come to us in our lives. Guide us in your ways of righteousness and peace as we await the promised Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Today's gospel reading puts Joseph in the spotlight. On this last Sunday of Advent, children's excitement is almost too much to contain. We're preparing to celebrate Jesus' birth with a whole heavenly host of angels singing praises and thanksgiving to God for this wonderful gift. But today we hear a very different story. Today we hear of an ordinary, quiet, faithful man named Joseph. Other than being a descendant of King David, there's nothing particularly special about Joseph's life. He spent his days as a carpenter. He followed Jewish law, and he was simply going about his ordinary life. But Matthew also tells us that Joseph was a righteous man, which means that Joseph loved God and tried to follow God's commandments. In all things, a righteous person will work toward God's will and God's kingdom. So when Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant, he turned to the scriptures for guidance. He found that he had two options. His first option was to bring charges against Mary in public. He could publicly accuse her of the sin of, adul of adultery. And the penalty for adultery, according to the scriptures, is death. Joseph's second option, as he could see it, was to divorce Mary privately. In the presence of two witnesses, he could write out a paper of divorce and present it to her. In this case, there would be no public charges against Mary. There would be no official penalty. People would eventually find out that Mary was pregnant and unwed, but she would at least be spared the public hearing and punishment of death. Now, because Joseph was a righteous man, he had to choose one of these two options because remaining married to her was out of the question. So dismissing Mary was clearly the more merciful option, and Joseph knew that God loved mercy. So he made his plan to divorce Mary privately, because in his mind, that was the right thing to do. And that's all he really wanted, was to do the right thing. In this way, Joseph can be quite relatable. We all want to do the right thing. We all strive to be righteous. When faced with a problem or a dilemma, we might turn to scripture, 
to morality, to family values or logic, or even what we might think will produce the best outcomes or advice. We do our best to tune out the noise of the world that tells us to look out only for ourselves or for our reputation. Like Joseph, we use the very best in us to try and follow our God, to seek justice and love mercy in order to do the right thing. Of course, it would be really great if this process of using the best that's in us always led us to doing the right thing, but it doesn't always work that way. In Joseph's case, if he had simply used the best that was in him to do what he thought was the right thing, it would have left our Savior without an earthly father. It could have drastically changed Jesus' childhood. But Joseph didn't know what God was up to. How could he? There was no way that he could have known God's will before God broke into his life to tell him. Ultimately, it took a late night interruption by an angel for Joseph to understand what God wanted for him and for Mary. In that middle of the night visit, the angel told Joseph that if he wanted to be a righteous man, if he wanted to do the right thing, it would look different from what he knew and from what he had practiced up until this point. As far as Joseph understood it, he had only had two options, but God brought along a surprise option C. The angel's message to Joseph was that God was doing something new in Mary and in the child that she carried. So Joseph, being a righteous man, followed God's will. He does what God called him to do. He keeps Mary as his wife and raises Jesus as his son. Now, of course, it wasn't as simple as choosing between the options that he believed were laid before him. He has to let go of his ideas of righteousness and the right thing, and he follows God's call for his life. Beloved siblings, sometimes God desires to show us a new way as well. Sometimes there's a surprise option C for us too. God may not come to us with angels and dreams, but God speaks to us throughout our lives, calling us and guiding us to new ways of living. So what are the new things that God is calling us, a righteous people, to? Is God calling us into new relationships with our family, our neighbors, our community, and our church? Is God calling us to contact people we wouldn't normally talk to, or to reach out to those we haven't seen or heard from in a while? Are we called to join the choir, a musical ensemble, Sunday school, Bible study, needles and thread, various committees, or even church council? Is God calling us to volunteer to serve in worship, to join Altar Guild, to lead outreach programs, to support our youth, or to find ways to, new ways to give generously of our time, talents, and possessions? Or is God calling us into our community by volunteering at the food pantry, coaching kids' sports, joining the PTA or other community organizations who are always looking for volunteers? God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing in each of us. And it all started over 2,000 years when God started doing a new thing in Joseph and when God started doing a new thing in Mary. God is doing something new in Christ. And this new thing is Emmanuel, God with us both 2,000 years ago and still today and long into the future, God is coming down to us wholly and fully for us and for our salvation. It means that our old way of doing things might have to change. It means that God calls us out of our comfort zone. It means that God empowers us to live a new kind of righteousness, to build new relationships, 
and to participate in God's life-giving, redemptive mission. In this Christ child, who is born to us anew each year, who comes to us now and always, God is working salvation, not just for the chosen people, not just for the righteous people, but for all people and all the world. This is God's gift to us, and this is the new thing that we celebrate today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Gathered now with all the people of God in Christ Jesus, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, you have saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Please sit or kneel as able. God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and wisdom to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fear so that we may serve and love, confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy. Hear us. God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habitats in peril due to rising seas and warming temperatures. God, in your mercy. God, our vision, raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights, especially Amnesty International. God, in your mercy. God, our helper, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families experiencing hunger, homelessness, or impoverishment. Comfort any who are isolated or lonely. God, in your mercy. God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship. And we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over those who travel. Heal the sick speed their recovery. Linda, John J, Pat J, Connie C, Vera, Michelle, Gloria, Greg, Joan M, Julia, Marie, Marilyn A, and Gretchen. God in your mercy. We give thanks, Father, with Elaine Lutz on the birth of her granddaughter, Olivia Sarah June Todd. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope, you bring life out of death, and you promise to be our God forever. Shine upon the faithful who now in rest in the, in the fulfillment of your promise, and bring us also into your blessed reign of peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these gifts and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. strong, do not fear. Here is your God who has come to save you. The congregation may be seated. Communion this morning will be celebrated at the communion rail. You're invited to come forward starting at this side and filling in all the way across the rail. After the distribution, if there are those that prefer to remain in their pew for safety reasons or for those that are worshiping on the live stream, I will lead you in receiving communion at that time.
Now for those receiving communion in your pews or online, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. And now the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have revealed your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And may the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, Christ is near. Thanks be to God. Joy to the world, all the boys and girls now. Joy to the fishies in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. Joy to the world. in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. 
Thank you, Ben. I'll see game. you at 2.45 today. Pizza at 5. Good. Help me order. Help me order. B-Y-O-D. Bring your own beverage. No, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get some Cokes and stuff. Water and tea, I don't know. I do. Thank <laughs> you.